are still missing Mr. Smith. Has anyone heard that he would not attend? No. Uh, I have not. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and start the recording and we'll go ahead and get started. And if he joins, we'll have him jump in. We are recording now. All right, we'll call to order the Greenwood Board of Zoning Appeals for January 25th, 2021. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the January 11th, 2021 meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Uh, Ms. Peters? Yes. Mr. Poehler? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And uh, is Mr. Smith on yet? Nope. And then I am a yes, so motion carries 4-0. Uh, Ed or Sergey, any special requests or continuances? Not that I know of. Okay. Neither do I. All right, then moving on, we'll go to findings of fact. Um, take final action request on BZA 2020-21021, Sedgwick Properties. Chairman, in consideration of the statutory criteria, I move that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as our final decision and final action for variance petition number B2020-21. Second. second. I have a motion by Mrs. Peters, second by Mr. Poehler, I believe was first there. Uh, Mrs. Peters? Yes. Mr. Poehler? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And I am a yes, motion carries 4-0. Uh, we'll take the same for BZA 2020-22 for Cruz property. Chairman, in consideration of statutory criteria, I move that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as our final decision and final action for variance petition number B2020-022. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Peters, second by Mr. Foster. Mrs. Peters? Yes. Mr. Poehler? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And I am a yes. Motion carries 4-0. Uh, same um, on BZA 2020-023. Use variance for Dogtopia? Chairman, in consideration of the statutory criteria, I move that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as our final decision and final action for variance petition number B2020-023. Second. Okay. I have a motion by Mrs. Peters, second by Mr. Foster. Uh, Mrs. Peters? Yes. Mr. Poehler? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And I am a yes, motion carries 4-0. And then the last one, same for BZA 2020-024, the developmental variance for Dogtopia. Chairman, in consideration of statutory criteria, I move that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as our final decision and final action for variance petition number B2020-024. Second. A motion by Ms. Peters, second by Mr. Poehler. Mrs. Peters? Yes. Mr. Poehler? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And I'm a yes, motion carries 4-0. All right, moving on to old business. We have a BZA 2020-025, the use variance request for Take 5 Indiana at 695 South State Road 135. Um, I believe, Andy, you are presenting on behalf of this petition, is that correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. You guys hear me? And, and yes, and Andy, what's your last name? Uh, Andy Morrison. Morrison, thank you, Mr. Morrison. Is anyone else on the line wishing to speak for or against this petition? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Jack Bailey. I represent uh, the Library Park uh, Professional Center Association, which has the office complex directly to the east of the subject property. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Anyone else? Um, myself, Lisa Allison. I am the owner of Park Pediatric Dentistry in the professional building to the east. And Jack is uh, my representation. Uh, as there's three owners, I'm one of the three. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, well, I'm going to have each of you uh, get sworn in by our secretary. Uh, we'll have to do it one at a time because of obviously trying to do it on Zoom. So 
Uh, Mr. Morrison, let's start with you and Lori, if you would swear each of them in. Do you swear under penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is to the best of your knowledge? I do. And then Mr. Bailey? Mr. Bailey, do you swear under penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is to the best of your knowledge? I do. And then finally, Ms. Allison. Ms. Allison, do you swear under penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is to the best of your knowledge? I do. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Morrison, let's start with you. If you would tell us why you're here and what you're trying to do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, like I said, my name is Andy Morrison. I'm the petitioner for Take 5 Indiana. Um, in our business, which is Take 5 Oil Change, falls into the use category of truck garages, body shops, vehicle service, and repair stations, um, which is under the CM commercial medium format classification. Um, so our use would be approved in that zoning. However, it is uh, prohibited within 150 feet from state road 135. And as such, we are um, asking for a variance from use to allow us to operate and take five oil change. Okay. Uh, and then do you have all of the, you guys have the, um, the staff report handy or do I need to share screen or anything? No, I, well, we do have it handy. Um, and, um, sorry. You're good. We, yes, we have it handy and we will need to go through the um, statutory criteria and get it read into the record at some point here. So once you uh, are ready to do that, I can, I can walk you through. Okay. Um, if you have others, if, if there's something specific you were, you were wanting to point out in the staff report, we can do that first. Yeah, um, I think, so probably the primary point that we're making um, related to the peculiar condition with this property, which would result in an unnecessary hardship is that it's just 0 0.537 acres and very irregularly shaped. So. Um, the length of the property along State Road 135 is about 270 feet, um, and it's about an average of 85 feet in width or the east to west measurement along uh, West Smith Valley Road. Um, so it's a, a very narrow parcel. And then in addition to that, there's 20 foot building setbacks off of 135 and a 10 foot building setback off the east property line. And so the result is that the developable area on this parcel of land is extremely small. So if you're thinking like a, a drive-through concept for fast food or a bank, those type of users would never be able to make this work. We have just a 1500 square foot building and we're effectively sitting on the setback lines off the east and west side. So, um, I guess not not allowing a prop this development to move forward, the, the property value of the, the landlord would be decimated. Um, I think another point that we wanted to address is it's obviously a high pro profile intersection. And so I think everybody should be concerned about kind of safety and traffic flow here. Um, and, and so we believe that our proposed development actually improves both of those aspects uh, greatly for a few reasons. First, our shops do between 30 and 50 cars per day. Uh, we're open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, on Sunday. So if you kind of if you think about that, it's really only a few cars per hour. So um, from an intensity or a traffic intensity perspective, you'd really be hard pressed to find something lighter uh, than what our use would bring to the table. Um, additionally, we, we actually also had a traffic study uh, put together for another a proposed development elsewhere in Indiana. And the, I think I had attached that for your guys' reference as well. And that the conclusion there was that there was a, a negligible impact on, um, on the thoroughfares nearby. Um, and then also with regards to safety, so our proposed developments would, it would call for three closed curb cuts on 135 and one closed curb cut on uh, Smith Valley. And so again, with respect to safety and traffic flow at the intersection, I think that would greatly improve um, relative to the status quo. 
Uh, and then another safety aspect would be the like sight line. So where are buildings situated on that parcel? I mean, if think if you have somebody headed uh, westbound on Smith Valley Road and it's a green light, maybe there's a, an emergency vehicle coming down 135, where our building is would give pretty strong north, northern visibility up 135 to avoid an accident um, resulting from a situation like that. Um, and then I guess the, the last comment I wanted to make our use, it's it's a drive, right? It's a drive through oil change. We're not really doing anything other than changing oil. Folks are staying in their vehicle the entire time. Um, but the, the use categories are fairly broad, right? It's truck garages, body shops, vehicle service and repair stations. So that's that's a big bucket. Um, and what we're doing is very different than kind of a rundown garage where you have beat up vehicles lying all over the place, which just isn't a very aesthetically pleasing view in terms of what the, the comprehensive plan is calling for on that corridor. Um, and in reality, I mean, we're, we would be, our proposal would be to erect a, a building that is, it would be a great improvement um, from an architectural standpoint uh, than what, what's currently there. And we also wouldn't really disrupt the use composition on that corridor, right? Before this, the ordinance was voted in, there's several other um, similar businesses with frontage on 135. So it's not like our use on 135 would be totally unprecedented. Um, let's go through, we're gonna have, like I said, we need to go through the statutory criteria specifically. So if you have that in front of you, um, we're, we're gonna need to read that into the record. Uh, so I can start you off and if you would respond with, with your answer. Um, number one, the approval of the requested use variance will not be injurious to the health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community because. So do, do you just want me to read my response? Yeah, you, you can absolutely. Or, yep. um, take five is a national brand with over 600 centers nationwide. Utmost importance is placed on environmental sustainability and management. The oil change center will comply with the architectural requirements dictated by the ordinance resulting in an aesthetically pleasing building. Um, and we've attached the elevations for your reference. It is also, it will also provide a high quality and convenient service um, to the residents of Greenwood. And furthermore, the property is situated at a high profile intersection where a high intensity use could materially disrupt traffic flow and increase the risk of vehicular accident. Operating a take five on the property neutralizes this risk since the average shop service is between 30 and 50 cars per day while open for business from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 10 a.m. through 5 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, business is also mostly spread throughout the day, unlike the mealtime rush at a quick serve restaurant or the constant barrage at a bank. In addition, the proposed site plan will include closing one curb cut on West Smith Valley Road and three curb cuts on State Road 135 including the two closest to the traffic signal. This will greatly improve traffic flow and safety at the intersection. Okay. Number two, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property included in the use variance will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner because? Uh, the adjacent properties along State Road 135 and West Smith Valley Road are currently zoned CM, commercial medium format, with existing operating businesses, including the property. A take five will positively impact adjacent property owners since the building will showcase architectural upgrades that will be more in line with Greenwood's comprehensive plan relative to the property's current building. Given the nature of business operations on the adjacent properties, Take 5 will attract new potential customers to the area, which will result in adv advantageous retail synergies for adjacent property owners. And number three, the need for the use variance arises from a condition peculiar to the property because? Uh, the property is 0 0.537 acres and irregularly shaped with frontage on State Road 135 of approximately 270 feet and frontage on West Smith Valley of approximately 85 feet. Uh, but that is just 72 feet of width on the north side of the property. The size and shape of the parcel are relevant because it makes the property extremely challenging to redevelop something that will likely become a requirement given Hertz's recent bankruptcy filing. 
when factoring in the building setback requirements of the ordinance and the narrow nature of the property, there are very few uses, if any, outside of a take five that would be able to fit given the parcel dimensions. Take five's roughly 1,500 square foot building makes it one of the few structures that can comply with building setbacks. And because take five's drive through model calls for cars actually driving through the building instead of around it, like a quick serve restaurant or bank, the site plan fits as well. Okay, and number four, the strict application of the terms of zoning ordinance will constitute an unusual and unnecessary hardship if it if applied to the property for which the use variance is sought because? Uh, for reasons described in the previous question, given the width, the west to east measurement of the property and that it ranges from 72 feet to 92 feet and that there is a 20 foot building setback requirement from State Road 135 and the 10 foot building setback requirement from the private drive uh, between the property, which is 695 South State Road 135 and 1700 West Smith Valley Road, the resulting developable area is extremely small. The Take 5 building is one of the few, if not the only buildings that can satisfy the setback requirements. Denial of this use variance request would be an unusual and unnecessary hardship for the owner of the property as the property would be rendered all but undevelopable. It would also leave the city with a building that does not meet its architectural standards. And number five, the approval of the use variance does not interfere substantially with the Greenwood Comprehensive Plan because? Uh, the parcel in question is already zoned CM, which allows for the operation of a quick serve oil change facility, just not within 150 feet of State Road 135. In addition, as discussed previously, while the strict application of the terms of the ordinance, specifically section 1003-16R, would not allow the proposed use. The proposed use does comply with the general purpose of the zoning ordinance per section 10-01-03, particularly with respect to lessening and avoiding congestion in public ways. Finally, the proposed use is actually more in line with the city's comprehensive plan than the property's current use due to take fives alignment with the zoning ordinances architectural standards. The city's comprehensive plan classifies the parcel in question in the commercial land use segment. The parcel also falls within the State Road 135 marketplace corridor area. Per the comprehensive plan, this corridor primarily functions as a local retail destination and is comprised of big box stores and franchise establishments with locally owned businesses located adjacent to the recognizable chain establishments. Further, the future land use of the State Road 135 corridor will continue to be commercial. A take five perfectly fits the city's current and future plans for the State Road 135 corridor. Finally, while there may not be precedent for granting a use variance to an automotive service business within 150 feet of State Road 135, there are several operating automotive repair and service businesses within 150 feet of State Road 35, 135, including Valvoline and Sun Oil Change, Firestone, and Jiffy Lube. So the feel and use composition along State Road 135 would not be impacted. Thank you. Um, you're, you're familiar with the recommendation or the conditions that the staff recommended should this be approved, which is number one, the project shall be constructed to be substantially similar to the provided documents. Understanding modifications may be required to meet technical review committee criteria. And number two, the property shall be limited to one curb cut on State Road 135 and no curb cuts on Smith Valley. Yep. Okay. Um, I do have one clarification before we move on here. So you have written and stated in um, number five of the statutory criteria that while there's not precedent for granting use variance to an automobile service business within 150 feet of State Road 135, there are several repair services within 150 feet of State Road 135. So you're are we uh so valvoline and firestone jiffy lube are all within the 150 feet that's correct okay i knew they were close i wasn't sure if uh they were within it or not so i was going to ask uh, actually gail and ed for clarification on that anyway okay um, i think all three of those businesses have direct frontage on 135 
That's what I thought. Okay. Um, with that, anyone else wishing to speak for this petition? Hey, I'm sorry. Did you say for or against? For for four. Still still four. Um, if not, then I will close that portion. Uh, and then Mr. Bailey and Ms. Allison, you'll have uh, 15 minutes also together combined to respond. And then um, Mr. Morris or Mr. Uh, Morrison, you'll have five minutes to uh, respond to their statement. So, uh, Mr. Bailey, I guess if you would like to kick us off, we'll we'll go into the next phase here. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I appreciate the uh, board giving us the uh, opportunity to be heard on this matter. As I mentioned earlier, um, I represent Library Park uh, Professional Center Association, um, which is the professional office complex just to the east of the subject property. Uh, <clears throat> and it's owned by uh, three individuals of that complex. One is uh, Dr. Allison, who's with us here this evening, uh, Dr. Uh, Greg Harden, and also Mr. Tom Deegan. Uh, so in representing them, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, could I uh, have permission to share my screen real quickly? Yes, I, I no problem. Okay. I, I can do it if I have your permission here. So. Um, yeah, I think some, okay. Can you see it? Can you see that? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so we really, uh, first and foremost, our objection isn't so much against the take five oil change. Uh, and I actually agree with Andy. Uh, I've looked at their drawings and, and uh, certainly the building they're proposing uh, is much more pleasing than uh, the existing uh, Hertz facility that's there. But Having said that, uh, the concerns of Library uh, Park Professional Center, are, uh, one is, is the increased traffic flow to an already uh, congested intersection. And I, I'll, I'll get in a little bit more detail on each of these in just a second. Uh, the inability for existing traffic to go north on State Road 135 or east on Smith Valley Road, the redirection of traffic flow across the private pro property of the uh, Library Park Professional Center uh, defaulting uh, parking areas will then become traffic low, flow avenues, and I'll explain why we say that. Safety concerns for the patients and clients of um, the uh, professional park uh, center. At least two of the uh, tenants in that professional center uh, are dentists. Uh, actually, there's two dentists, an orthodontist, and they can. Uh, they treat children. In fact, in Dr. Allison's case, that's all she treats. Hers is a pediatric practice. Um, and then uh, potential interference with any future road widening of Smith Valley Road, which I think we all know that's probably a wave coming to our beach at some point in time. And then, of course, as your staff uh, recognized in their, um, in their uh, denial recommendation, uh, the violation of, of Section uh, 10, 3, 16. Um, what I would like to point out is if you, this is the drawing that was submitted with the petition and I'll get you some actual uh, photographs here in just a second that'll make this a little clearer. But what they're proposing, they actually right now have five cut, cutaways uh, on the property. There's one right here. I think you can see my cursor, right? Uh, one here, one here. One here, there's one here, there's one here. And what they're proposing is, and Andy correct me if I'm wrong on this uh, during his thing, they're they're proposing to close that cutaway, that cutaway, that cutaway, this one up here, and just have this one that's on 135. And their traffic flow, as their drawing would indicate, is that everybody would come through here and all exit would be here onto a right of ingress and egress that exists right here onto, um, onto Smith Valley Road. Uh, and that's really the only exit that they're showing. Uh, what we would propose, and I'll mention why in a minute, is that the traffic could either come back here to their one cutaway or it could go to the other cutaway or whatever. Here's, here's what our concern is. Um, so oh, this is a, a Google picture of the area. 
as it's developed right now. And this is the Hertz building uh, that, that uh, on Andy's property. And the cutaway that they're, or the exit that they're proposing is right here on this ingress egress. This is not a throughway here. Uh, there's landscaping here. Steve Schoolcraft has this, this development up here. There's landscaping across here. Along this boundary property line right there, there's parallel parking of cars. As you can see, there's, there's vertical parking here, vertical parking along here, and vertical parking along here. Even in this picture, and by the way, this is pretty light as normal. This intersection is a nightmare. And even in this picture, you can see where the traffic is backed up on Smith Valley Road. And that's because if you've ever been there, the traffic is always backed up there on Smith Valley Road. So our concern is that if people are exiting as the petition is proposing, there's no way these people are gonna get out on Smith Valley Road. And unless out of the kindness of somebody's heart, somebody lets them in. The easier way for them to go and get out is going to be going straight across this parking lot and out here to Library Park Drive and then get out on Smith Valley Road or I'll blow this out a little bit. Or as you can see, if they come through the parking lot, come out here on, park, on Library Park Drive, if they wanna get on 135, they can go up to Library Park Boulevard and go out that way. The real concern of that is all of a sudden, this parking lot becomes a thoroughfare for exiting traffic of 30 or 50 cars a day going through a parking lot where we've got children coming out of their office. This, is, this danger is especially heightened during the COVID uh, situation because right now, a lot of the parents stay in their cars and wait for their children to come out from the treatment. And then their children are walking out of the building walking across the driveway to the parked cars of their parents. Um, our suggestion is that we use one of the, that they use one of these two cutaways. And part of the reason we suggest that is because then their customers that are exiting have a fighting chance of getting back out into the flow of traffic because they've got a stoplight here that will at least stop traffic for them. Nothing stops traffic at this point over here on Smith Valley Road. So and from that standpoint, it, it does uh, create a hazard. Let me see if there's anything else that I didn't. Uh... Yeah, so the, the other issue obviously that we all know is um, at some point in time, we all know Smith Valley Road is, I mean, we've seen them out looking at it and surveying. I mean, it's gonna get widened. I don't know what the future of this intersection is. I don't know how much the domain is going to be involved by the NDOT and all of that, but that that intersection is definitely a hurt point right now. And we feel like having cars here, go back to their drawing. And even in their drawing, by the way, or not their drawing, I'm sorry, their, their photograph, you can see cars backed up on a double lane deal here. And so people are coming out here, they want to go west of Smith Valley Road, it's possible that somebody might let them into this turn lane. This is a turn lane. If they want to go east, they've got to get two lanes of traffic to let them cut through, and then pray that nobody is going coming through the intersection coming from, from the west. Um, so we just feel like this configuration is really a bad idea. Not to be misunderstand, misunderstood, our objection really isn't with a take five oil change center. That's, that's not our problem. Our problem is we just don't want these 30 or 50 cars uh, going through here. And actually, if I may, this ingress, egress, that's, that's really, that doesn't exist. Um, they have their parking blocks of their uh, parking lot there. So there's no traffic going in and out there now. Plus, there is no way to go there because, as I said, this is all landscaped here. And any traffic coming across here, this driveway is even narrower than this one here in front of the office building. This is the back of the office building. 
So for, for those reasons of, um, and specifically, uh, I would go back and address your criteria one and two. Uh, we do feel like that the approval, in fact, would be injurious to the health and safety, the general welfare of, of uh, people that are visiting uh, this particular um, office complex, health providing complex next door. And uh, we also feel that it, as, in, as it says in two, uh, granting it in this configuration uh, is certainly uh, going to uh, have an adverse effect uh, on the property, the east and east that property. So any time I might have left, uh, I would yield to Dr. Allison if uh, she would like to add anything. And we, we have about five minutes, Ms. Allison, if you'd like to add anything. Okay. Um, I, so similarly to what Jack Bailey was kind of describing, you know, right now as is um, with the Hertz building next to us, again, I am a huge proponent for any type of like updates to the Hertz building. It is somewhat of an eyesore, but um, you know, currently as it stands, Hertz doesn't have any exits uh, into like our parking lot as it is now. And it is fairly safe and, you know, the way that it is at this current moment. And so with the proposed, you know, um, zoning variants and having them exit like to our parking lot, I can attest I'm here, you know, day in and day out. Our, our, our hours are Monday through Friday. And especially with the pandemic, a lot of the patients, parents, um, are waiting in their cars and even without the pandemic, you know, all the parents um, for all of those practices, because there are three uh, dental practices. It's Dr. New, who's next to us, who's closest or on the most West End. I'm in the middle portion of that professional building and then an orthodontist. And so is on the most Eastern part of that. And so the volume of patients and parents that we have coming in and out of our buildings and, you know, I can attest for my practice and then the orthodontist that we do see lots of kids. And even with them being escorted by their parents, you know, to and from the cars and also like by our assistants or my dental assistants, um, you know, it's still no matter what to be able to walk right out of your building and have it be a concern for instead of it being a parking lot, but like a thoroughfare where cars are driving through is quite a bit of a concern. And as you can see from the current picture now, um, it is pretty isolated because anybody that's going to be driving in that parking lot views that as a parking lot because they're there as a patient or a parent of a patient. And if they do continue with that uh, variance and allow that exit, it will turn our parking lot into a road instead of a parking lot. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's about all we have. Uh, as we said, we're not against the, the concept itself. I mean, if there was some way, if they kept these two and made uh, this one an entrance so that the people could go through their thing and then come out and turn right and maybe this one's an exit uh, and close the other three as they've already suggested, then we've got no problem with it. But uh, having all of their customers of 30 or 50 cars empty into that parking lot. Uh, it, it's, that's our biggest reason that we would uh, ask the position be denied. Okay. Thank you both. Uh, close that and turn it back over to Mr. Yeah. Morrison. You have uh, five minutes to respond. Yes. Um, I'm going to share my screen if you don't mind as well. Yep. No problem. Um, You guys see it? Uh, no, I don't know. Someone has to. Someone have to approve him. Oh, I don't okay. think I completed. Oh, now I should. Be. There we go. Yep. There go. All right. So a couple things. One, I don't. I don't want our customers going through your parking lot either. And we've agreed. So this is a parcel. I think the one. It's a separate parcel of land. It's private. It's on, like you said, by Steve Schoolcraft. And we've agreed to terms with Steve. So, I mean, we'd be happy to 
one, block this off, two, I mean, if we own the whole parcel, we will be able to, we can modify where this connection is right here. So exiting back onto 135 would be a possibility. Um, so, I mean, it would be our property. We would be willing to, I mean, if it's a, I don't know, some type of gate or whatever to close off the possibility of customers exiting the bay and going straight through your parking lot. Cause yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody wants that. Um, so I, that would be my main response. I mean, regarding the white, like the widening of um, the road with dot projects. I mean, I think there's a proposed one right now that Dale made us aware of. Um, and I think our conclusion was that it didn't, our development didn't interfere with the proposed improvements to the intersection. Um, and then finally, I guess the reality of the situation, Hertz is on a month to month lease and they filed for bankruptcy. This property's Unfortunately, it's, a, it's very irregularly shaped and as we've discussed, it's just gonna be challenging to redevelop. And so, but it's going to have to be redeveloped uh, or, or the property owner's just gonna to have to sit on it and it's not gonna be worth anything. Um, and I, I guess our view is back from a traffic perspective, we're so low intensity relative to any other retailer. Um, that we think we should be able to come up with a plan that works. And again, we'd be willing to do whatever we need to do to eliminate cars driving out of our bays and through your your parking lot. I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't want them to do that. Um, but there, there should be theoretically no reason why we couldn't close that off and have them either come down again. It'll be challenging to Exxon Smith Valley, we understand that, but either come down here or head back up north and then through this connection, which yeah, maybe part of it's landscaped right now, but it, it would be on our property and we could change that to an access road to come out through this curb cut here. Um, I can't see the far side and I don't know, I'm not trying to look at it on a different picture you, you've provided, but Mr. Bailey or Ms. Allison, mm -hmm. what is the impact of closing that off? Because I might, my first question is then how are people getting to you so well the the uh the fact of using all of this up here that's somewhat speculative right now i mean i've spoken with schoolcraft and that property has not been sold and more so i i i personally think that his, their own picture there pretty much identifies the easy way for them to resolve this. I mean, obviously the, the traffic on Smith Valley Road, even, even if they block the dirt outgoing traffic from coming into the Library Park professional parking lot, those cars are still gonna have to have a place to go. So if they're wanting to go east, uh, or well, yeah, if they're wanting to go east or maybe, I don't know, they're going to go then to the parking lot behind the building. Um, it, it's and yet at the same time, again, when you look at the same picture, you can see that any of their exiting customers have a somewhat easy chance and safe chance of getting off of that lot because of the stoplight stopping traffic. Whereas we don't have that situation over on them proposing to use the ingress and egress. And I might mention that Steve uh, Schoolcraft does not own all of that property. Uh, the property from the edge of the road about to where, yeah, right where his arrow is, that yeah. is ingress, uh, ingress, egress easement uh, that Steve does not own. Um, so anyway, yeah. Yeah, I think the picture kind of speaks. Yeah, I mean, we'd be right, we would be purchasing it to the whole thought was to purchase it to one be able to close a cut closer to the intersection, but just to facilitate a smoother exiting. So, Mr. Can Morrison, I, oh sorry, I should say, what is what would be or is there a challenge if you if you did what is suggested and cut that off and routed traffic back as suggested to a cutout on one thirty five? And I'd like to interject here for a second because if that is something that this board entertains, um, we do need to leave some discretion to the fire department because yep. if, they are not, if they are not able to serve the professional office building, then we would need to 
say we we would make some sort of commitment to alter the site plan we need to leave some flexibility there to address fire department concerns because i'd imagine that that professional building being one story it's probably stick frame and there's there's probably yes. some access concerns there and that was some of my question is what what are the what are the other challenges so i appreciate that mr davis um okay I, I, our public hearing time is up so i'm going to close the public hearing um i will start with the board members and um uh, mrs peters i think you had a question uh, no, my only question, I mean, I see this was filed last year. When was the petition filed? I mean, I know they're talking about this, this change in October. Was the petition filed after, before? Filed after. It was filed after the change. Are you, are you speaking of the adoption of the UDO? Yeah. Yeah, this petition was filed after that date. Okay. Um, and that easement there, that, that easement is for, for all users, whether it be whoever uh, is going to develop this uh, property on the corner for them to use as well as the people in the professional buildings. Is that not correct? I mean, that easement is not dedicated just to the professional building, right? That egress. Yeah, are you, are you asking me? I'm sorry. That, yeah, that's my well, I think. Yeah, and I think that's probably a question for Ed or Dale. Well, no, it's private easement. I I don't know who all is included in that. Uh, that's not necessarily an easement. That's a yeah, platted a, parcel and and beacon. Or I don't know if it's platted, but it's a separate parcel. So whoever owns that can choose how it's utilized. Is what we're saying. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, that it's not uh, platted, but it is a separate parcel. Um, it's, so it's private owned. Yeah, but it's by meets and bounds description, kind of like uh, the building we're we're talking about here. So does the owner of that would they would anyone who owned that have the right to close off that parking lot to the library park building? The access to it from that side? Ed, I don't know if you've seen the language to go with that uh, parcel, the ingress, ease, uh, ingress, egress. I have not seen that. Yeah, neither have I. Okay. I mean, if it's private owned, it sounds as though there's a third party there that should be uh, impacted by anything that's done with this approval or, or not. Uh, well, he, he's selling it, we've agreed to terms. I see, so. Oh, us. He's yeah, selling they're, us. they're talking about the ingress, egress easement. Oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Because it seems like that's what's an argument at this point is how can that be utilized? What can be done? I guess I'm trying to figure out are we at a position to be able to make a decision without knowing that? Well, and that is the parcel they've referred to during their presentation that's owned by uh, Steve Schoolcraft. I, I believe his acronym is SFF, SFS uh, Real Estate, who, who owns this. So they own that private part driveway there, basically. Yes. But are and they're there the ones park? that own the Hertz parking lot, I mean, Hertz property too. No. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, that's what I thought you were saying. No, but but Mr. Morrison is in agreement with Mr. Schoolcraft to buy also that, uh -huh. that that lane. About right here, it cuts off right here. Yeah. That's okay. Um, all right, Miss Miss Peters, additional questions? Um, not at this time. Okay, Mr. Poehler. Uh, not at this time. Mr. Foster? No, sir. All right. I, um, I don't know that I have any questions. This is a tough, this is, uh, as the evidence has been presented, I, I, um, 
struggle with this as well. I, I not generally opposed to the business and the proposal. I do think there is precedent of similar businesses along the way, as you mentioned, Mr. Morrison. Uh, however, when it comes to this board, it's really about the statutory criteria. And I think um, there have been many things brought up that, that put some of this in, in doubt. And I guess from my perspective, I would really prefer that everyone be in alignment with how traffic flow might um, be better served before we, um, I guess, approved something like this from, from my perspective. But um, I just, I think, I think there's enough doubt here, uh, unfortunately. From Mr. Chairman, can um, would you mind if I ask the uh, applicant a couple of questions as well? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Morrison, I just uh, I want to ask you a couple of follow-up questions about your presentation. Um, sure. Has my my first question is uh, has the property owner attempted to use the property for any of the currently permitted uses? Have they tried to redevelop it for a permitted use? Correct. No. So this is as far as I understand, uh, the take five is. Uh, kind of the first offer to redevelop that particular parcel. Is that right? That is my understanding. Okay. Um, and, and my other question is, you, you indicated that the property values might be decimate, decimated if take five would not be um, the uh, prospective user of that parcel. Sure. Uh, is that just a speculation or you have any sort of uh, uh, appraisal study or anything of that nature? I mean, it's a comment based on just my understanding of real estate in the market. There's not going to be, it's going to be very challenging with the setbacks and all the development standards and the ordinance to, I mean, you might maybe reuse it as a car lot. I don't know. I mean, I, I can't think of a use that's going to be permitted and solve the problems, all of the problems that we're discussing. And, and that's why I, and my final question is, do you know if a property owner has attempted to apply for dimensional variance, variance for currently permitted use to address some of the issues with setbacks? Um, no, I, I'm not aware of that. But again, kind of goes back to even if they got one, you'd still you only have 30 feet additional because it's still so such a narrow parcel. Um, and they're public right away, so still it's challenging. Understood. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Sergey. All right. Uh, if no more questions from the board, I will take them. Uh, Ed and Sergey, are all the notices in order? Yeah. Uh, notices yes. are in order and receipts are in the file. Okay. I'll take a motion to accept them. So moved. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, Mr. Puller, I'm going to need somebody to read those in. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Chairman, I move that we admit all the evidence presented in regard to this matter, including the notices, receipts, maps, photographs, written documents, petitioner's application and attachments, petitioner's detailed statement of reasons, the staff report prepared by the planning department, certified copies of the zoning ordinance and comprehensive plan, testimony of the petitioner, city planning staff and any remonstrators and all other exhibits presented, be they oral or written for consideration by this board in regard to this petition and to include the testimony of those present this evening. Second. Motion by Ms. Peters, second by Mr. Poehler. Uh, Ms. Peters? Yes. Mr. Poehler? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And I am a yes, this motion carries four zero. Um, I will take a motion on the docket itself. Mr. Chairman, uh, if do would you like me to email this PowerPoint presentation to anyone so you have that in your um, in your record? Ed or Sergey, I I assume yes, that, that, that certainly would be helpful. Yeah, Mr. Bailey, this yeah. is Dale Davis. I think you have my my email. You can you can go ahead and send it to me. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I'll take a motion on the docket. Mr. Chairman, having considered the statutory criteria. No, no, I'm sorry, uh, on, on approving or denying the uh, docket itself, sorry. 
Oh, um, I make a motion to uh, deny this request. Second. A motion by Mr. Fuller, a second by Mr. Foster to deny. Uh, Mrs. Peters? Approve. Uh, are you saying Agreed. yay? Agree. Uh, yay yay. To, the, to the motion. Yay. Okay. Mr. Fuller? Yay. Mr. Foster? Affirmative. And I am a yay. A motion carries 4 0 to deny. Um, now I will take Mr. a motion. Mr. Chairman, I believe it was uh, 3 1. No, I, uh, let, all right, let's clarify because I think everybody, Mrs. Peters, you are voting. For and the deny. Yes. 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 For the motion. Yeah. Uh, okay. So motion carries four zero to deny. Um, I will take a motion to um, take final action or to uh, to, to adopt written findings of fact. Sorry. Um, so the motion for written findings of fact. Yes. Correct. Okay. Having to adopt them. Having considered the statutory criteria, I move that we direct the Corporation's Council Office to draft written findings of fact regarding our decision on the variance request presented in the variance petition number uh, 2020-025. Said findings to specifically incorporate the staff report and the evidence submitted into record for consideration and adoption by this Board of Zoning Appeals as our final decision and final action regarding this petition at our next meeting. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Poehler, second by Mrs. Peters. Mrs. Peters? Yes. Mr. Poehler? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And I am a yes, that motion carries 4-0. Thank you all. Um, a question, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, on our ballot, um, I know we with the motion to deny an affirmative, but what uh, on the conditions do we? You will not check any conditions because there was no conditions tied to the denial. So that's what I thought. Just want to make sure. You Thank you. Good. No problem. Um, any old business from the floor? Any new business? Uh, there is no new business, and I assume no new business from the floor. Ed, announcements? I have none. Sergey. Okay. The only. The only announcements I'd have are uh, just mainly for those of us on this meeting, there is no planning commission meeting tonight. So uh, mainly for IT. So this meeting is over when this board is done. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you. Sergey, anything from your end? Nothing from our end. We are, uh, the only thing that I can uh, report is that we are monitoring the governor about the uh, in-person meetings. Um, we have not heard anything to indicate otherwise that there would be in-person next uh, next meeting or maybe even a meeting after, but um, I, I think we are getting to that point where uh, it might be a consideration next month or so. That would be fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Adjourn. Board of Zoning Appeals, January 25th, 2021 is adjourned. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Thank you. Good night.